Hi, uh, welcome to the second episode of the London Beatles sites. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, the Bag and Owls Club where Paul met Linda and we're also going to visit uh, or have a look at the building at uh, the BBC, the uh, Paris Studios BBC near Piccadilly Circus. So let's go. Hello, welcome to uh, the second episode of our travel around London looking at the Beatles sites. Um, my name is Mike and I am the uh, producer director of the Wanderer channel and uh, there's an ornate clock uh, on the front or the side of Liberty's, the department store, but that's not the building we are going to be looking at. That building is this one and this is now called the Miranda Club. As you can see, it's in Kingley Street, and uh, back in the 60s, this club was called the Bag and Owls Club, and it was here that Paul McCartney met Linda Eastman. Now, because um, the Beatles were leading such unusual lives uh, in the 60s, uh, being pop stars and all, uh, they couldn't have nights out like everybody else. Uh, for a start they might be doing a show and uh, so their night out wouldn't start till after the show had finished and this would be round about midnight uh, maybe even one o'clock in the morning and of course by then all the pubs had closed. The only venues that would be open would be clubs like this the uh, the Bag and Owls as it was called then. And this was an all night uh, club, all night drinking venue and it was a live music club and some of the, the artists that would play here would be like The Animals or Georgie Fame and The Blue Flames and any top act like that. Now the story goes that um, Paul was in the Bag and Owls one evening having a drink and a dance as you do and he spots this young lady uh, who we now know to be Linda and they obviously hit it off, having a drink and a dance together. Uh, but the funny thing was, at the end of the evening, they said their goodbyes and uh, never met again for a year. And uh, Paul and John went to America to launch Apple, their new uh, publishing company, the new produ uh, production company, based at number three, Savile Row. They had a press conference in America uh, to launch Apple, and that's where Paul and Linda met again and uh, this time they must have really hit it off because uh, a year later in March of 1969 they got married and they got married at Marylebone Registry Office in London um, and we're going to be visiting that building later on in, in this series on the Wanderer Channel. Directly next door to the Miranda Club is this building and uh, it's now called Oliver J Benjamin but about uh, five or six years ago this was the original site of the Beatles uh, memorabilia shop, the Beatles shop, which is now located in Baker Street. I just thought I'd point this out as we were here. Okay, well we're on our way to uh, the uh, BBC building where the Beatles recorded uh, the Beatles at the BBC CD. Uh, but we've passed, we've got to pass this building, and so it seems a bit silly not to mention it. Uh, this is Apple, uh, and Apple has been well documented on the Wanderer channel, so we're not going to hang around here and talk about it all over again. But I just thought I'd point it out to you uh, on the way to the BBC building. Okay, so uh, we're still on our way to the BBC uh, studios where the Beatles recorded uh, the Beatles at the BBC CD. But here's another point of interest. This display screen that you see me on uh, was actually used in the Real Love video. Uh, those of you that have seen the anthology, or anywhere really, that the uh, Real Love video was broadcast. Uh, this is at Piccadilly Circus, and this display screen was used in that video. 
so I uh, just thought I'd point that out as we are uh, here. Okay, those of you who've got uh, the Beatles um, CD, double CD, called the Beatles at the BBC, may recognise this building. This is, as you can see, Rex House. But back in the 60s, this was uh, the BBC Paris Studios in London. Uh, and the Beatles uh, appeared here uh, between March 62 and June 65, and were the featured performers in 52 uh, BBC radio programs recording some 88 songs uh, and uh, the audiences they got in those days would be about 6 million uh, listeners which uh, in today's terms is absolutely extraordinary OK, I've got the original photograph here from the Beatles at the BBC uh, CD cover. It will crossfade and show the photograph that I took when I was out filming. If we crossfade again, it highlights with a white circle an emblem up on the wall, as you can see. Crossfade again to the original cover, and that emblem is highlighted again above George's head. Superimpose the Beatles there on my photograph. Crossfade again and it highlights the same emblem above George's head. Crossfade again back to the original cover picture and you can see that I'm very much in the position that that photograph was taken. And uh, this is a photograph I took on the day of filming of the emblem that's above George's head and you can see on the Beatles at the BBC CD album cover or CD cover. <laughs> 